in uh, uh, yes, last session we have discussed the meaning of enterprise risk management, and then uh, we also learned the concept that is risk philosophy, risk strategy, and risk culture, risk appetite. That with some example we have discussed. Then I think this slide also we have discussed in last session that is uh, the scope of ERM that is enterprise risk management. So we will start with the technology risk, technology risk. Now this risk is common for almost companies who are using technology and almost all companies are using technology. So technology risk is any potential for technology failure to disrupt your business such as information security incidences or service out outages. Well, sometimes what happens? People, they take undue advantage because of technology failure and they make some uh, fraud. Or sometimes because of this uh, technology failure, our works get delayed. So that service outage. So that is also now here examples such as information security, theft, service outage. As everybody, everyone knows what is a cyber attack. And there are uh, some hackers who purposely they plan cyber attack and literally system, they are not able to trace them. So it has happened with uh, many times with credit card or with bank, with insurance company. So cyber attacks have happened and company have faced huge loss. Now, even uh, in education sector also, many times university, uh, even it happened with Savitribhai Pulik Pulik University, there was 
लास्ट इयर सायबर अटैक मध्य एक्जामिनेशन से सीस्टम वॉज कोलैप्स बट सम हाउ दे कूड मैनेज एंड इट देर वॉज नो लॉस टू द स्टूडेंट एंड यूनिवर्सिटी now how to avoid this cyber attack so in cyber hackers they plan cyber attack then uh, it being invited they are they are not uh, doing unlawful un unlawful things they are not doing any unlawful things but actually they are helping to the that is why they are known as ethical hackers so with the help of ethical hackers uh, potential attack can be identified and it can be controlled then password so if you want to avoid this such a way that uh, uh, you all are aware passwords should be in, in the combination of alphabet uh, numeric and then special character like special character like say and, and then dollar exclamatory mark these are the special character uh, numeric 1 2 3 4 between 1 to 9 and uh, alphabet so if you have this kind of combination then definitely it becomes difficult for uh, hackers to steal your password and never ever use password as a, your date of birth or your vehicle number such a, a number should not be used so this is this was all about technology uh, risk okay now i am showing you the next slide everyone please read this uh, about insurance and then uh, we will explain you I have done with the reading insurance risk management. Yes. Now let's understand insurance risk management. Let me tell you, under finance, insurance is one of the sector where uh, risk management study is involved, and there are some experts who are involved in risk management, like say actuaries, 
actually actually means who are uh, designing amount of premium who are designing uh, entire uh, insurance product so they are called as actuaries actuarial science like say uh, we know economics and then finance accounts then engineering likewise in insurance there is actuarial science so people who have done actuaries uh, courses they are uh, involved into the risk management so it is the assessment and quantification of the likelihood and financial impact of events that may occur in the customer's world that requires settlement by the insurer and the ability to spread the risk of these events occurring across other insurance underwriters in the market now if you take example of say uh, vehicle insurance motor automobile insurance so in automobile insurance uh, when we all are aware that this is exposed on the highway or even in city road also any time accident uh, may happen with the vehicle so sometimes there are also theft of uh, vehicle and uh, maybe minor accident major accident so this is the risk exposed with the automobile insurance if you take another example of health insurance so people who have purchased health insurance so suppose if they get admitted in the hospital so that expenses then how to analyze health insurance so again it goes with the age so generally uh, people who are having uh, who are having in the age bracket between 25 to 30 generally they are not prone to the diseases but the policy holder whose age is between 35 to 40 so there are uh, more chances to Uh, of diseases so such people if they go for uh, first time health insurance so their premium is a little bit higher and if you are going at a younger age your premium will be lower so that way the risk is managed in respect of health insurance and uh, a person who is suppose at the age of say 55 and if he is going for insurance insurance company will not deny by offering uh, insurance they will uh, offer insurance but insurance company uh, will have some uh, terms and condition a person who is uh, more than 55 year of age so suppose if he has already suffered with say some diseases so, so that diseases actually when you fill like the uh, policy form that time only insurance company asks certain information that have you been admitted in hospital uh, before and if answer is yes so for which disease then how many days you have taken treatment so that kind of information so insurance company comes to know that this particular person is having uh, this disease now that is why there are actuaries now let me show you about actuarial risk look at this slide actuarial risk read this and then we'll explain more
actual risk basically it is uh, this risk is based based upon some assumptions so th this assumption most of the time it works but sometimes it doesn't work also but on the basis of assumption actuaries implement into model and there are mathematical model uh, analogy models are being developed with the help of some statistic information financial information and economic information so actual science it has the combination of uh, mathematics then uh, statistics finance and accounts so this kind of four uh, branches having combination in actual science and with the help of this the models are being developed and you will be surprised uh, we have very uh, small number of people who have done this actual course and there is a great demand in uh, from insurance company because as per the IRDA uh, rules and regulation IRDA has mentioned that every insurance company should have uh, should appoint uh, actuaries so that in, uh, in India there are very less number of actuaries av available and there is a huge demand for actuaries and these courses are available now the price specific insurance policies may prove to be inaccurate or wrong so possible assumptions include the frequency of losses now if you take the example of say uh, about fire insurance so fire insurance generally it happens maybe because of say uh, faulty electrification work there are some faults in the wiring so this is one uh, common uh, cause where fire take place most of the time another uh, reason is that uh, people's negligence so sometimes they smoke in the premises and uh, they throw uh, the piece of cigarette anywhere and because of this also the fire take place so these are some possible assumptions which includes frequency of losses as i give the example of say uh, cigarette and then uh, faulty wiring am i correct generally for fire insurance these are the common uh, reasons yes sir now the severity of losses and the correlation of losses between contracts so this has to be identified severity of losses and the correlation of losses correlation means what uh, this particular fire has happened because of say uh, faulty wiring so if uh, this correlation matches then uh, this will be a suggestion uh, from insurance company to all uh, uh, enterprises that every after three year electrification work has to be checked every after three year wiring has to be checked out or it has to be replaced every after 10 years so that kind of and if they do not replace wiring then such claim will not be sanctioned, such claim will not be uh, accepted, it will be rejected. So that kind of rule can be made by insurance company and this way they control their risk because frequently it is happening because of uh, say faulty wiring. So faulty wiring every after 7 or 10 years it has to be uh, changed, it has to be new wiring has to be done. So that kind of but many times it, it also happened there are uh, new wiring and uh, in spite of new wiring there are some cases where fire took place but these cases are very few uh, that is why i told you the correlation if your correlation matches because of say faulty wiring then uh, you have to be serious there so this is the example of actual risk in case of insurance company actual risk now here, actuaries, actuaries means who are designing insurance product and who are uh, designing premium amount. So those people should take care and they should develop their model in a such a way that uh, insurance company, insurance company's uh, uh, claim ratio should be minimum. Claim ratio means number of policies and number of claims there should be more number of policies and number of claims should be less. So that ratio is always good for insurance company. Whereas if number of policies are less and number of claims are more, then insurance company will suffer a loss. So uh, that will not be good for insurance company. 
Now, let's under, understand about the next risk that is underwriting risk. Now, again, uh, read this risk and then we'll explain it. Once uh, your reading is done, just give me that your reading is done. Underwriting risk. Everyone, please read out underwriting risk. After actual risk, this is underwriting risk. I have done reading. Are you done with the reading? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's understand underwriting risk. Basically, it is uh, it happens with the underwriter. Now, who is underwriter? Underwriter who designs the policy paper of insurance product. So while uh, drafting uh, policy, uh, insurance policy or drafting insurance policy, there itself, the mistakes or errors are made by uh, a person who drafts insurance policy and he is the no one but underwriter. So while drafting insurance policy, each and every minute uh, and major things should be considered carefully. And that is why uh, there is one principle in insurance that at most good faith, at most good faith, at most good faith means uh, whenever a policy holder he goes for a purchase of insurance product, so that time insurance company gives a, a form to fill up. So while filling that form, uh, policy holder should take maximum precaution while writing information into that uh, policy form. And uh, other way, a person who is uh, filling that uh, policy form, that is policy order, his job is to give true and fair, sorry, true and fair information. And in case if a policy order uh, do not give true and fair information to the policy uh, uh, to the insurance company, so insurance company has right to reject uh, such claim. So that kind of uh, uh, loss may happen with the policy order. So, whenever you purchase any uh, insurance product, maybe life insurance product or health insurance or uh, automobile insurance, whatever information is being asked by insurance company to you, you have to give true and fair information in that form. So, that is known as utmost good faith. So, that faith, that good faith, <coughs> excuse me, that good faith has to be reflected in your policy form and there are uh, some people who are having some wrong attitude purposely they don't give true and fair information to the insurance company and in that case then what happens if insurance company come to know that you have hide this information from company then that time the claims are rejected so if you want to as a policy holder if you want to avoid rejection of your claim. So it is your uh, moral duty to give true and fair information to the uh, company, the insurance company. So underwriting risk, it is uh, nothing but while drafting a policy form, that time errors are there. Some uh, mistakes are uh, contained in the policy form. And because of that mistake, claim ratio increases, means their premium amount, amount is uh, lower and claim amount is higher. So that thing happens. And this is not good for any insurance company. So this was about uh, risk 
involved with an uh, insurance company that is underwriting risk and actual risk. Actual risk, it is uh, because of, say, uh, defining uh, insurance premium and underwriting risk, it is because of faulty application form. Okay? What this point? What is underwriting risk and what is the actual risk? Underwriting risk, it is the risk because of faulty application form, faulty policy form. And actual risk, it is because of uh, faulty designing premium amount. Do you understand this? What I'm sharing with you? Actual risk and underwriting risk. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Now let's uh, go to the next slide. That is investment risk. Now, what is this investment risk? Now, first, everyone read this slide and then we'll explain it. Read, everyone. So let's uh, understand investment risk. Now, basically, this investment risk can be discussed from the point of view investor and can be discussed from the point of view company who are accepting the risk. So we will discuss from both the point of view. So now let us uh, discuss from the point of view, uh, from the company point of view. Sorry. Let us discuss from the company point of view. What is investment risk? Now, company who are offering different kind of investment. Uh, say, for example, if you take the example of mutual fund companies. So, mutual fund companies are offering mutual funds uh, unit to the public. Now, while offering this uh, mutual fund and uh, they also give some uh, estimated uh, return to their unit holders so that unit holder at least they will uh, come to know that what is the return involved in this mutual fund. Same happens with insurance company also, particularly life insurance. So life insurance, they have schemes like say money payback, money payback. This is one of the popular scheme which is introduced by Life Insurance Corporation of India. Now in money back, whatever bonus and uh, some insured amount which is being returned back to the policy holder. Now how insurance company manages offering return to the policy holder and again their own expenses. So in, uh, now in insurance company, whenever they offer some return, to the policy holders, suppose today they are making investment and maybe in the next 10 years, the returns will be given. So by um, after 10, uh, in next 10 years, 
as you know there are because it is a long period ten year today you cannot uh, estimate the exact thing what will happen maybe after eighth year or ninth year because of there are lot of uncertainties involved now even if you take example of say last two year this uh, pandemic situation pandemic situation has changed like anything even uh, no one uh, yeah, was expecting this will happen in the year 2019 and 20 particular 2020 and 2021 but uh, you we all are witness that how it has impact on uh, investment i know that uh, corona this is not a frequent uh, disease uh, which has come uh, to the world so it is one of the rarest rare uh, disease rarest rare but it has come and it continued two years and even today also uh, we cannot claim that uh, we are away from corona virus even today also we are exposed to uh, that uh, uh, disease Any time, if uh, cases increases, government may uh, put some uh, restrictions on the economy. But uh, we also seen in last two year whatever uh, curbing and restrictions were put by government. Now government is also facing problem uh, of uh, economic improvement. So now uh, everyone has realized that uh, we we should not stop our uh, transition. But while uh, continuing our transition. we should take maximum precaution so let me share with you from the company point of view as i give you the example of mutual fund companies when mutual fund company promises certain return to their uh, unit holder so it is the uh, cautious step taken by mutual fund companies to put their whatever amount they are receive from unit holder that amount should be circulated in a well manner in industry so that they will earn return from industry industry is those who are in requirement of fund such fund can be given to the industry and from industry they will have, they will have uh, interest so as i was trying to give the example of mutual fund mutual fund companies that whatever return they have promised to the unit holder while uh, giving that return mutual fund company should see that uh, whatever amount they have collected in the form of unit that amount should be well circulated in industry so that they should be able to manage their own expenses as well as the expectation of unit holder so this was from the company point of view now let us understand from the investor point of view what is the investment risk this uh, mutual fund example a mutual fund so uh, if you study mutual fund there are many uh, several uh, schemes are there 
like uh, and there are uh, several types of uh, mutual fund like a scheme like say sip sip do you know what is sip in mutual fund anybody knows what is sip yes please do you know sip scheme of mutual fund what is sip yes please are you aware what is sip yes or no am i audible am i audible ek hote ka tumhala hello hello yes sir so have you heard sip what is sip sir systematic investment plan yes systematic investment plan now this systematic investment plan the persons are allowed to make investment every month whatever investment they wanting to have maybe 5000 rupees per month or maybe 25000 rupees per month it is their wish so uh, every month a person is putting a certain amount into their uh, into that particular fund and then insurance company sorry mutual fund company uh, buy units on behalf of that person and such units are being maintained under his portfolio now every month and then uh, suppose if you continue this maybe uh, uh, five to six years so it is the promise given by mutual fund companies that uh, if you are having five to six years uh, sip then uh, a person may get about 30 to 15 percent return on and over their investment so this is the promise given by uh, mutual fund companies in case of uh, sip and uh, many times uh, there are returns uh, which is more than uh, 15% also but sometimes there are also return which is less than 10% also so finally we can say here though mutual fund companies are promising uh, in uh, return between 12 to 15% but again there is no guarantee that people will get between 10 to 15 as i told you sometimes there is also 10 percent so this may also happen so this is the risk from the investor point of view another risk is liquidity now what is liquidity liquidity means whenever we want to convert that investment to the money so that time uh, people are not finding that particular investment easily convert into the money so it takes some time so by the time uh, it uh, loses its uh, relevance it loses its relevance so that is the liquidity risk involved with the investment so liquidity risk is one of the point from the uh, investor liquidity and as i told you liquidity means easily conversion of uh, product into the money that is known as liquidity conversion of product into money because ultimately you want money suppose if you make investment maybe in uh, real estate like say flat or uh, land again there is also liquidity risk is involved now how liquidity risk is involved in real estate now suppose if you are having say 10 acres of 10 acres of land and you want to you, you want to sell that 10 acres of land so you may not get one customer who can purchase 10 acres of land so there are the three four people and who are willing to purchase uh, just one acre or one and a half acre from you so for that purpose then you have to see you have to search another four five customers who are ready to purchase uh, maybe one and a half acre or two acres of land so here your time uh, increases again you will have to deal with a uh, number of people if you are getting one customer then only one dealing will be happen happening with because there is only one customer but if there are five customer different customer then you have to have five meetings with different people and then again their uh, uh, way of uh, making payment will be different terms conditions are different so that becomes uh, sometimes cumbersome and uh, tedious job to convert that real estate into the money are you getting my point what i'm sharing with you 
liquidity is yes sir so uh, do you think that the, this risk is involved with the investment liquidity is it is there or not in real estate yes sir now one more example if you take example of gold gold so again uh, we we all are aware that our indian uh, population is crazy about gold and particularly uh, i am not saying only women but even uh, there is a uh, craziness in a uh, main category also men also like to have more and more gold women are there women they always have attraction towards gold but even now uh, nowadays men are also having uh, huge attraction of gold now now what is the risk involved with this investment gold one of the biggest risk is that uh theft because if you are purchasing huge amount of gold and if you are keeping in your house then what will happen what is the risk involved if you are keeping gold in house what may happen the theft issue yes theft issue so any time a uh, thief or a uh, uh, burglar they can uh, break your uh, Uh, lock and they can enter in your house and they can uh, steal your gold and not only that sometimes while stealing gold if you resist if you uh, stop them then uh, they may hit you maybe whatever things they are having a big gun or a, a sword so again uh, there is a risk for human being also so whether it is uh, gold or uh, say real estate which i have shared with the different point so this risk investment risk is always uh, involved with the company point of view as well as investor point of view but still though there are risk but still uh, people are uh, uh, purchasing uh, gold people are purchasing uh, real estate people are making investment in mutual fund because these are the different options and avenues available in the market those who are having surplus amount they always uh, maintain their uh, portfolio they have their investment in uh, different different investments they do not invest in one category not only in gold or not only in uh, uh, real estate if they are having a good amount say part of the amount in uh, gold part of amount may be in mutual fund and some amount may be in real estate so that way if you are making investment i think that investment portfolio is always good because there is a say that if you are keeping uh, eggs in one place one corner and if something goes wrong that corner then your all all eggs will be broken so instead of keeping all eggs at one corner you should uh, keep your uh, eggs at a different uh, corners suppose if there are four corners so keep uh, in one corner two eggs keep in second corner three eggs keep in third corner maybe four eggs and keep in four corner maybe two eggs if something goes wrong with uh, say four corner so there is losses of only two eggs but remaining eggs are safe so that is why i am giving you the example if you are having uh, your money keep into the different uh, portfolio as i gave the example of egg because if something goes wrong with one corner at least three corners are safe it is uh, only loss of one corner so similarly if you are putting your investment in a different portfolio if something goes wrong with one portfolio at least other portfolio will compensate your loss are you getting my example yes sir so this this is about the investment uh, how to avoid investment risk so this is the way you can avoid investment risk as a investor if you are investor always remember you have to maintain portfolio uh, have different kind of uh, investment in uh, uh different options so that if something goes wrong with one option at least other option will compensate they will help you to recover from that loss so this this is all about uh, unit number 4 and now let me take you uh, to the slide this so this is investment risk then we also discuss about underwriting risk which is basically uh, insurance policy form then actual risk as i told you it is because of 
premium, designing of premium. And then we also discuss about insurance risk management. Then uh, we uh, discuss about the technology risk. Technology risk, it happens because of cyber attack, password theft, and service outage. And because of this, uh, there is a, a loss for uh, financial institutions. Then uh, in last session, we have discussed the scope of ERM. ERM stands for Enterprises Risk Management. So it should encompass all significant components in order to assess risk effectively. So that also we are seeing that there is a huge scope for ERM. Only we have to have a creative and analytical thinking, not only analytical, but creative thinking and analytical thinking will uh, give you a good career and maybe good earning source from the risk management uh, uh, business. Then the concept is the other concept here. And there we have discussed philosophy, risk strategy, risk appetite, and risk culture. That also we have learned. And this was the first slide of this uh, fourth unit, risk management for enterprises. This risk management, it is the process of identifying and addressing methodically the potential events that represent risk to the achievement of strategic objectives or to opportunities to gain competitive advantage. And the examples are global crisis, as I give the Russia-Ukraine uh, war, so that global IT system failure. So it is happening in European countries as well as Asian countries, IT system failure. Then uh, data breaches, data stealing by hackers, then fraud, loss of people and litigation. So these are all issues which are associated with companies, enterprises. So this, this is all about risk management for enterprises and how to minimize the risk, risk which is associated with companies. So in the next session, next session we will uh, we'll start unit number five, last and uh, unit number five will start in the next session. So before we close today's session, in case if you have any doubt or if you want to ask anything about this uh, fourth unit, you are welcome. Yes, any doubt so far? No, sir. Okay, then uh, thank you all and good night. Our unit on the four is over. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>